Hi, I'm Howie Goldstein, uh, and I'm the instructor and developer for this course. I'm going to introduce you to part one of a four-part series on CompTIA Storage Plus. Storage Plus is a brand new certification from CompTIA. And the idea behind Storage Plus is to give you exposure to everything involved with storage and storage networking in the data center and everywhere else for that matter. Two registered trademarks to remember. Storage Plus is a registered trademark to CompTIA, Computer Technical Information Association. And the SNIA, SNIA as we call it, is the Storage Networking Industry Association. Let's talk about the course and the course description. Part one will cover the basics and cover storage. Other parts will cover other areas of the storage network environment. We'll take a bottoms up approach. We'll start off with the basics. We'll look at the basics of storage and network and then move on to the whole idea of applications running on top of that infrastructure. The first thing we've got to know is what are the basics and what is storage really all about? We'll identify why organizations are moving towards attachment strategies like NAS and SAN and combinations of NAS, network attached storage and SAN, storage area networks. They sound very similar, but in reality, they're very different kinds of functions. We'll provide a comprehensive technical examination of technologies like Fiber Channel, SCSI, SAS, and SATA. And that's just the basic protocols, as well as IP storage and the iSCSI information. Sounds like a dirty guy, but in reality, what we're talking about is an application that helps bring SAN infrastructures to the IP world. We'll examine the practical problems that people face in data centers as they try to incorporate new uses of storage and bring new benefits to the IT infrastructure. We'll identify the technologies that are used to overcome a lot of the problems, different ways of being able to do backup and recovery, different kinds of network strategies with LAN-based backup, LAN-free backup, serverless backup, server-free backup, continuous data protection, data deduplication, there's all kinds of functions that we're going to talk about here. We'll take a look at the components and the products that implement a strategy like NAS or SAN. And there's controversy in terms of which type of attachment strategy is the best type. Which protocol is the best protocol? Should I be implementing Fiber Channel in my enterprise? Or should I take a look at iSCSI kinds of solutions? We'll answer all of these questions as we go through the course. We'll examine the design and the performance aspect of a SAN. You know, how many fabric switches should I employ? How many links should exist between those switches? How much load can a fiber channel adapter port on a storage controller actually take in terms of throughput and response? We'll take a look at storage networks today Storage networks yesterday and storage network tomorrow. You know, what are the up and coming technologies? You know, what's happening in regards to cloud storage, for example, or big data, or fiber channel over Ethernet in the data center? You know, what are the, who are the vendors that are going to uh, you know, win a significant portion of the market? <clears throat> what are the network concepts associated with storage networking? And again, we'll identify techniques that relate to NAS performance, SAN performance, even direct attached storage. That was the course description. The objectives I have is to compare and contrast storage versus networks. One of the first things that you need to understand is that there's no such thing as a fiber channel drive. There's a fiber channel interface on a SCSI drive. We have to understand what the networking functions are, and we have to understand what the storage functions are as well. We'll take a look at the hype cycle uh, that the Gartner Group put out there in terms of what happens in the development of technology. 
We'll explain different elements of storage and storage networks and the role they play from the standpoint of usable capacity and the performance of application transactions that are going after that data. We'll again talk about DAS and NAS and SAN and FAN, all the three letter alphabet soup that comes with a storage based infrastructure and when to use one facility and when to use another. It all depends upon what it is you're trying to do. We'll look at the idea of blocks and files and even the new object storage devices that you'll see coming down the road. We'll identify functions and component parts of the storage environment. We talked about the basics, now let's look at storage. Disk and tape. And what's happening in regards to solid state storage or solid state devices? We'll take a look at RAID and what are the various redundant array of independent disk capabilities that we can have. And the issues of LUN kind of uh, sounds like uh, the Orient, the issues of LUN. Uh, it's the year of the LUN. Well, we're talking about the logical unit number. What is LUN aggregation? What is thick and thin provisioning trying to do? Dynamic LUN expansion and persistent binding. What are all these terms and what do they mean? We'll take a look at SCSI initiators, SCSI targets, logical unit numbers. And we'll take a look at different kinds of storage infrastructures. Believe it or not, we have a thing called a JBOD, just a bunch of LUNs, uh, just a bunch of disks, JBAL, just a bunch of LUNs. And uh, we'll take a look at some other magical configurations of disk drives. RAID, even made massive array of idle disk configurations. We'll explain what used to happen in terms of a storage network technology. The parallel SCSI bus or the parallel ATA bus cable that you found inside your old computer all dusty. Well, there was a reason for that kind of structure smaller numbers of devices used in those systems. And what's happened in regards to the movement from parallel to serial with SAS and SATA kinds of storage devices and transports. We'll talk about what storage networks can and can't do for you. Really, when you come right down to it, SANs are nothing more than virtual SCSI cables. Pretty expensive new plumbing, but it serves as the basis for all the new kinds of connectivity and new kinds of applications that we can do in a data center environment and outside of the data center as well. From a course prerequisites point of view, we have no prerequisites other than whatever skills you have that you bring to the table. You know, it's helpful to have some basic computer literacy, but you should be able to understand everything that we talk about in this course. And I'll tell you that we'll cover some significant detail as well. well. I'll do my best to make it understandable for everybody that takes this course. Passing the course is one thing. Passing the exam is something else again. This course has been tested by the people at CompTIA. And we cover in this course greater than 100% of the things that are on that exam. CompTIA suggests that if you want to take the Storage Plus exam, it's helpful if you have CompTIA A Plus or Network Plus or Security Plus certification. In my opinion, take the course and you'll learn what you need to know to be able to pass the exam. We're going to talk about Storage Networking Certification Program from SNEA, not only Storage Plus, but other certifications as well. We'll talk about networks versus storage. You know, what's the difference in function between networks and storage? We'll look at the standards of storage. There are a whole series of issues that come along with capacity, like speed versus bandwidth versus throughput. We'll look at how network links contribute to that, how storage contributes, how servers and network devices contribute to capacity. We'll look at the attachment strategies, DAS and NAS, and storage area networks, or SANs and something called a file area network, FANs. We'll look at what I call hybrid devices that are both SANs and NASs in one. We'll look at 
the application of technology for external and internal SANs. And we'll look at the role of blocks, files, and something new, objects, and objects storage. We'll look at standards in relation to content addressable or content aware storage. And then we'll take a look at some of the infrastructure. We'll look at hard disk drives. We'll look at the various markets that disk drives are created for. We'll look at what's happening with solid state today in terms of solid state storage or solid state drives. We'll look at just a bunch of disks and this, the role of the storage array controller. We'll look at the use of logical unit numbers inside of storage array controllers. And finally, we'll look at RAID, redundant array of independent disks, and MADE, massive array of independent disks, and all the various RAID levels that can be used to provide benefits. Then we'll take a look at what I call storage technology, the protocols associated with storage. The first one being the age-old SCSI interface, a form of storage communication. We'll look at the SCSI functions, what happens with reads and writes, inquiries, formats, ejects, all kinds of commands that can be done with SCSI. We'll look at legacy SCSI transport, the parallel SCSI bus, and what issues did we solve as we moved away from the parallel SCSI bus and onto serial technology like SAS or serial ATA. And we'll also see a whole series of topics related to networking concepts in the appendices. So if you need to get a refresher on some of the basic concepts, I've got a way of being able to provide that too. From a curriculum path point of view, there are many paths that are implemented by CompTIA through the use of both training and certification. There's the A+, plus, there's the Network+, plus, there's the Security+, plus, and all of them could serve as a great basis upon which to build Storage+. Plus. I'm not saying that they're prereqs, but it's useful if you have them. CompTIA expects Storage+, plus really to be as big as all those other foundation kinds of uh, certifications as well. And again, Storage Plus Part 1 is the course that we're talking about here. And in there we cover the basics and we cover storage. In Part 2, we'll move on to the network technologies, fiber channel technologies in particular, as well as the components. Fiber channel has been very big and continues to be big as a technology for SANS. In part three, we'll take a look at what's called IP storage and the use of IP facilities to create IP-based storage area networks. We'll also look at the issues of performance and how to solve problems in a storage networking environment. And in part four, we move away from the infrastructure and we move up to the applications that are involved, both data protection and data management, and also things like information lifecycle management, virtualization, storage management as well. We'll have exercises and we'll have quizzes that you'll be able to take. Quizzes will support the learning. Exercises will give you a chance to be able to do some things in regards to demos of technology. We'll have a little bit of show and tell. We'll learn how to use some of the tracing tools that exist uh, in the uh, storage world. And at all times, if you have a question or you have a comment, use this comment box and uh, set, send me a question or, or send me a comment as well. So that's my introduction. Let's go ahead and get started.